to the Social Security Administration, a man who lives until 65 will live on average until 83.4, and a woman will live until 86.6. So obviously our lifespan is getting longer as the years go on. And um, one of the biggest things that we have to think about is what does retirement look like for us? And um, eating a dead horse here, talked about savings last time, but this is a little different, I swear. Um, so, as I mentioned last time, I am a financial rep at Northwestern Mutual, so I experience this on a daily. And what I'm really here to talk to you about today is really taking that responsibility, personal responsibility, of making sure that you don't have the funds for retirement if Social Security isn't. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is a need first want analysis, um, ways to save, and the cost of waiting. <coughs> All right, so need first want, a lot of people that I deal with say, hey, I don't have enough money to invest. However, I learned this interesting statistic. Um, apparently, twelve hundred dollars by the American average American spend uh, twelve hundred dollars per year on fast food. So that is a hundred dollars a month. But you can't put that towards you know, your long-term goals. So what do we get out of these consumable goods? A full stomach. start as small as say $50 a month and in this example if you start saving $200 a month at the age of 22 in 10 years you'll have $37,000 um, with investment of 8% 20 years $122,000 by 67 $1.2 million which is pretty awesome I believe that's $3,000 per month So there's some different ways to save. Your savings account, which your interest rate on that is less than inflation, so you're kind of losing money by having it there, but as I mentioned in my last speech, it is necessary for those unexpected events. Um, past that, you have some short-term vehicles such as CDs and bonds, which has a less risky return. Uh, mutual funds, you have a little bit higher risk value life insurance, you also can get some good gains on that. Real estate, you never know how that market's going to go, so it's a little up in the air. A traditional IRA, it's definitely a good thing, but the benefits that are paid out after 59 and a half are taxable. Um, the Roth IRA and the 401k are seen as the most efficient retirement savings, and then we also have annuities. <coughs> That can do. Um, time value of money, so we have to think about what does our money look like right now versus what it's going to do in the future. 
such as how you're going to do those savings. Uh, compounding interest, which I mentioned, um, the Roth IRA is so efficient because once you do put that money into <coughs> that savings tool, um, it compounds, which essentially is interest on interest. So your money is basically working for you. Pretty awesome. As far as the cost of saving or cost of leaving goes. This graph does a pretty good job of describing it. So at age 30, you start investing up until you're 65. And if, say, you wait three years, there's $36,000 that you lost out on for those three years. Uh, further down the line, 125K and 89K. So as you can see, that compounding interest is really what's going to make your investment grow and you'll have retirement funds. So I'd really like you guys to identify your needs versus your wants. Figure out how you're gonna get there. Maybe any of the different methods that I talked about. 